back here at the NRA Firearms Museum. I'm here with Phil Schreier, Senior Curator. And Phil, there's been so much talk lately about shotguns by a certain VP guy. So we think we thought we'd look at some shotguns, but you've got some really neat shotguns to show us for Curator's Corner. What do you have, sir? Well, John, it's spring and time to go out to the, uh, well, that's what they tell us at any rate <laughs> on the calendar. And I'm like, things were still frozen at home this morning. <laughs> At any rate, uh, that's when we all dust off our shotguns and our plus fours and tweeds and head to the skeet and trap fields and go go enjoy the rites of, of spring passage. And awesome. So uh, time to dust off the old shotguns. So we thought we'd bring out a, a couple of sh different shotguns for the next few editions of Curator's Corner and talk to you about some interesting designs and variants that most people probably haven't heard of before. And, you can certainly see here on display at the National Firearms Museum. That one is interesting looking. Tell, tell us what we got. Well, this is a Roper repeating shotgun. Mm. Uh, it's very interesting in the fact that, uh, you know, when we, uh, when we look at firearms technology and advancements and what people purchased and bought, very early on, uh, firearms were a necessity. They were, uh, a needed piece of uh, your inventory if you were going to live on the frontier in the for, plains. For you, everything from protection to getting food to exactly. whatever. Yeah. But in the immediate post-Civil War era, firearms begin to take on a recreational aspect. Mm -hmm. And we're able to actually, uh, we're no longer clawing our way across the frontier. We're no longer eking out a, uh, an existence. Uh, where these provide sustenance for our families. Now we have leisure time, first time in history that that word is used, leisure time. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and with it came things like the Roper shotgun. This is 1866. The very first models of these were a percussion or used a percussion chamber, but the neat thing about it is that it's a repeater fires four rounds. Very interesting, you have a, a little top gate here. When you cock it, it retracts this bolt mm -hmm. all the way back. Wow. And then this round action brings another cartridge into play. Now in the percussion version, it would be like an auxiliary chamber right. with a percussion cap on it. And then to fire it, you just did that, fires the thing, you, you bring it back and it rotates a new round into place. All right, so looks good, looks sound. How well did that work? I've never fired one. Uh, the company did stay in business for 10 years. Uh, at first in Amherst, Massachusetts, and then they moved to uh, Hartford, Connecticut near Colt. Uh, they were in business there until uh, 18, 1877, 1878, I think. And uh, they also made rifles. Uh, they made this shotgun in uh, 12 gauge and in 16 gauge, and uh, they're they're very uh, uh, sought after by by collectors. They're very valuable. Uh, it's a it's a good looking gun, but it's also an interesting looking gun, especially for a shotgun with that with that chamber on there like that. So it, I'm sure collectors would like to have one of those in in there as part of their collection. The Roper shotgun. Another facet of the gun that that's interesting that. Uh, is also, I don't know if it's a first, but this is an adjustable choke. A choke, yeah. And we're talking 1866, wow. an adjustable choke. So do we know if that's the first one? Should we get the trivia fans? Yeah, get the, <laughs> is it uh, the first choke? Someone will look it up, I'm sure, but yeah, we, man, we, that's great. Yeah. 1866, an adjustable choke. So wow. it's, uh, and this piece is, is very, beautiful, uh, very nice, still a lot of vibrant case color mm -hmm. on, the, uh, on the receiver here. Uh, all the parts are here. It works very well. Uh, nice blue, uh, mirror blue in the protected areas. This uh, this gun, uh, well, at least uh, Norm Flaterman's uh, uh, Guide to Antique American Firearms and their values puts this at, at well over $10,000. Wow. All right, we're almost out of time. How can people get more information about the National Firearms Museum, Bill? Well, you can visit the National Firearms Museum seven days a week in Fairfax, Virginia just off of Interstate 66 at the intersection of Route 50. We're open seven days a week from 9.30 to 5, and the only day of the year we're closed is Christmas. Uh, free parking, free admission. If you can't visit us off the interstate, visit us on the internet at nramuseum.com.
don't forget tonight on Sportsman Channel, NRA Guns and Gold with Phil Schreier and Jim Sapika. Check it out tonight on Sportsman. Thank you for a great first shotgun installment of the Curator's Corner. Thank, Thank you, Thank you, John.